Hello everyone, welcome to day 20 of May Lead Code Challenge and I hope all of you are having a great time. My name is Sanjay Dudeja, I am working as Technical Architect SD4 at Adobe and here I present day 693 of daily lead code problem. The question that we have in today is unique parts 2. Here in this question, we are given a grid of size m cross n where initially placed at the top left corner, we want to reach the bottom right corner, we want to count the number of ways in which this can be achieved. Also, there are places that have been marked as obstacles. Once you reach an obstacle, you can't cross that cell ahead. So that's an absolute blocked path for you. Without further ado, let's quickly walk through the presentation section where I'll be talking you through the algorithm and various test cases on how to solve this question now. Lead code 63, unique parts 2. It's a medium level question on lead code and I also feel the same. Also, in case if you have any doubt understanding this question or if you want to ask anything from me in general, please feel free to ping on the Telegram group or the Discord server of Coding Decoded. Both the links are stated in the description, so do check them out. Now let's get started. So here in this question, as I told, we, uh, there is a robot who is placed at the top left corner. He wants to reach the bottom right corner, which is this cell, and we need to count the number of ways of doing so. Also, there are certain cells that are marked as obstacles, so we can't cross these cells as these are completely blocked. Now, let's for a second forget there are any obstacles in the grid. And if let's hypothetically assume there are four ways of reaching this particular cell, four ways of reaching this particular cell. And you want to calculate the total number of ways in order to reach this particular cell. This is a, any cell in the middle. So in how many ways this can be done? So it can be done one coming from this end and other coming from this end. So four plus four gives you eight. That means in order to reach this particular cell that I'm highlighting right now, there are eight ways to do it. And now let's consider a case where we see an obstacle placed over here. So let's hypothetically assume an obstacle is being placed over here and a big obstacle is there therefore as soon as you see an obstacle the total number of ways in order to reach that particular cell instead of 8 gets reduced to 0 so when you see an obstacle the number of ways for reaching that cell becomes 0 otherwise it's equal to the value just above that cell plus the value just to the left of that cell if you add these two up then you'll get that Let's apply this learning to an actual test case so that you get a good hold of the concept. So let's take a grid of size 3 rows and 4 columns and there is an obstacle placed over here. Even before jumping onto it, there is a slight test case that we need to think of first while filling in data in the first row. So here you can see there are no obstacle in this row and there is only one way out while traversing the first row which is you have only one direction through which you can move. Therefore, we can say that for reaching this particular node, this one, there is only one way out. So uh, there will be one way for reaching this particular node as well. There is only one way for reaching this particular node as well. Uh, uh, also, there is only one way for reaching this particular node as well. So the entire in the entire row, unless you see an obstacle, all the values will be filled in with one value because there is only one direction in which you can move along this path. Similarly, there is only one way by for filling up the first column as well. So you can only come from the up direction. Therefore, the value one gets transferred over here. And along this path, there's only one way to reach this particular cell too. So for the first row and the first column, exclusive handling needs to be done. And as soon as you see an obstacle in the first row and first column, you stop dumping one in that row or column because you can't proceed ahead. So let the value remain as zero there. Now let's apply the learning from the previous test case and let's fill in the remaining values of the grid. So let's walk through this one first. So what is the value at the immediate top row? So the value is one. What is the value in the immediate left column? It's again one. So one plus one gives you two, which is in sync with our expectation. One path is coming from this. One path is coming by this. Let's proceed ahead. Now. Here we see an obstacle. So what we are going to do, we will not apply the previous algorithm that I stated over here. We will simply update this value to zero. So this gets updated to zero because here we have an obstacle. 
there is no way you can cross this obstacle up let's continue the process let's look at look out for this particular cell and in how many ways can you reach this particular cell so let's take the value one above the cell so what is that value it is one so one plus zero gives you one so the answer here becomes one which is in sync with our expectation there's no, because there is only one way in order to reach this particular cell let's proceed ahead let's check in how many ways can you reach this particular cell so there are two ways to reach this particular cell one way you to reach this particular cell so one plus two gives you three so the answer becomes three in sync with our expectation let's proceed ahead next is this cell so zero plus three gives you three so the answer becomes three and here finally what is the value so uh, it would be equal to one plus three which is four so the answer becomes four this is what we need to read on what is the value in the last row last column it is four and this is the answer so i'll be following the exactly same steps as i just talked right now and let's quickly move on to the coding section the time complexity of this approach is order of n into m and the space complexity also equal to order of n into m even before jumping on to the details of this code i want to show you that we have already solved unique paths one which is pretty easier question than this one so if you want to try this question out the video link is in the description too also we have solved a pretty higher question than this one which is unique paths 3 so we, with this we complete the entire series of unique paths 1 2 and 3 questions i am attaching both these links in the description so do check them out if you want to revise this concept thoroughly apart from this i have also created coding decoded graph division sheet if you are new to graphs and you're always apprehensive that you don't understand how graphs actually work so here i have listed out those questions which will help you get a good understanding of all the various graph traversals that we have toposort dfs bfs the jigstra spanning tree union find so do the, give these questions a shot also most of the times you are baffled before the interview what questions to devise try these questions up I know it's a jam packed situation just one day before the interview. Uh, you will be able to cover all the concepts which are fairly asked in interviews and it will give you the confidence that you are prepared for it. So it will act as a confidence booster to you. In case you get stuck in any of the question, the video link is also stated along with it. So I hope you thoroughly enjoy these up. Now let's get back to the unique parts 2 problem. In the first go I have created a DP array of size m cross n which is pretty simple and straightforward. We have been doing this plenty of times. And here, I, using two loops, I iterate over my first column, I iterate over my first row. In case my current cell into consideration happens to be an obstacle, I break it then and there itself. Otherwise, I set the value in that row or column as one. So remember, this is an important corner case, which people often tend to miss out. Moving ahead, I have created two loops, one for, for traversing over the rest of the cells in my matrix and it starts from i equals to 1 goes up till m, m i loop starts from this j loop starts from n goes up till n and in case i see an obstacle what do i do i update dp of i comma j to 0 otherwise i go to the previous up cell i go to the immediate left cell and i add those two up and set that value as dp of i comma j once i am done with this i simply return the value at the bottom right corner of my grid in my dpra so let's try this up accepted 100 times faster which is pretty good the time complexity i have already told its order of n cross m and space complexity is again the same because you are creating a dpra for storing the data with this let's wrap up today's session i hope you enjoyed it and if you did please don't forget to like share and subscribe to the channel thanks for viewing it over to you guys with all these three links in the description section so do check them out thank you